Okay, so today we're going to start working on the um, cabinets for the kitchen. Uh, I'm cutting these, or I took the, a full sheet. I cut it 35 inches, another 35 inches, and that way I can get five panels out of it. <clears throat> for what I want to do, I need six. But at least I get five out of one sheet, and I have left a leftover piece from something else uh, probably from the beds that is big enough to do um, do it all right so what I'm gonna do is split this in half the countertop is uh, 22 inches 21 inches I gotta have notes Countertops, uh, 22 inches. What? These are going to be 24. Uh, the reason for that is the windows on the bus are 28 inches high. The um, This is going to be 35 because that's comfortable working height for a counter. What I'm going to do is the last couple inches I'm going to notch out down at the 28 inch level and um, I'm going to bump it away from the uh, from the windows so that I can have a trough behind the the, the um, sink uh, to put flower pots fresh herbs for the garden I've got all those windows I might as well take advantage of that and uh, be able to have a little fresh herbs uh, to go with so I've drawn a line down the halfway. I got to cut that, and this is the big square for that. But what I also need to do is a um, toe kick at the bottom of the cabinet. So when you're standing close, your toes aren't going to hit it. And I'm coming up three inches and going in three inches, and that's where this is. This is nice. Excuse me. Is I can do that. Have that all drawn out. And when I cut this, I can notch these out of here. And I am going to leave a one inch lip on the countertop. So I got to figure that out for the, the cutting. So let me uh, grab the saw. We'll get this uh, cut out and we'll move on to the next part. I'm just going to do one cabinet. Uh, this is going to be the small one and then I'll do the, uh, the big one for the kitchen sink, but this will give you an idea of how I'm building it. All right, so let me get this cut and we'll go from there. front this will be the back and um, the 
bottom shelf is going to go right along here. We'll put a toe kick there, space to run wires, whatever underneath if I need to. So, now get the uh, stuff, we'll start working on the other part, or the, the framework. Okay, cut the framework. I'm going to use the, the uh, chop saw. And one thing I like to do, because I move this around so much, is to... Yeah, let me move you around the other side here. What I like to do is take my square and make sure that the blade is square to this framework and up and down because I want a nice true cut and uh, like I said I move this back and forth I don't want to leave it outside all the time so it's always pays to, to just takes a second to check it and there we go so let me grab the wood two sizes of, of uh, wood this piece will go along the uh, from front to back so I need to cut those 21 inches and then this wider stock I'm going across the front I want a, the wider piece and that one the first um, first cabinet is 17 and 3 quarters I got to take away the 3 quarter inch on either end for the plywood and the thickness of these so each of those is going to be 12 inches 12 and 3 quarters inches so let me get to cutting these and uh, we'll at least get one of these together today You might be tempted to just go, oh, this is 12 and 3 quarters, so this one's going to be uh, 24, 25 and a half. Mark it. Got to take into account that kerf. That's going to change the, the distance. It's better to measure them one at a time. Or do like the I did with the other end. I measured from either end of the board. You will recognize this... Uh, jig from the uh, ceiling episodes and in this case in that it didn't really matter just held it with my hand this one I really want it to be accurate so I'm clamping it down I'm gonna put two holes in the end of each big board so I can attach them like so and we'll put some glue we'll get to that in a minute let me just drill these So, for those who didn't see it before, it's a pocket hole jig. When I screw this together, this, the screws are going to be hidden. Um, it's going to pull this together really nice and tight and makes for a very good, strong uh, bond. Mechanical holds it until the glue sets in and even beyond. So, I'll get all these drilled and then we'll put one together. Now before I put this together, the way I want to attach it to the cabinets is going to be glue and then screws to hold it. But these, I'm going to use the same screws I'm using for the pockets because they have a nice flat head, a good strong hold. They don't go all the way through. So in order for me to have this out into that three quarter inch plywood, I need to drill uh, a countersunk hole an inch. Um, an inch deep my with a short bit even with a long bit my uh, driver will fit in there and drive it in real nice 
So I'm going to use the same bit I used to drill the pockets. I'm just going to drill straight down because I want to go an inch deep. I put a piece of tape up an inch and get it centered up on the board here. And drill down until I get to that the tape. And that gives me that inch countersink. There we go. I'll get the other one. And we'll uh, glue this one up. Okay, I got a generous amount of glue on here. Line the end up. Screw in there. One thing I've definitely learned is to keep my fingers away from this crack because when this pulls together, it's going to pull in tight. See, a nice tight joint. Nice and square. We'll get it all done up and then um, we'll go in. I got to cut the, the bottom shelf. We'll put uh, this first cabinet together. Although I need one more piece. All right, so we'll get to the, that in a minute. Morning, YouTube. All right, uh, today we're going to put together the first cabinet. Uh, you saw me do a lot of the uh, prep work yesterday. So, what I've got is these are the two sides, toe kick's cut out, this is the top piece that's going to go in here, uh, this is the shelf that will go across the bottom, eventually I'll probably put a drawer in the middle, and this will be the face plate that goes on the front. I've also got a couple other little pieces in the back, I've got little corners, uh, this is going to help keep it straight. And I got a couple of uh, things to hold the shelf up. So let's get putting this thing together. Okay, what I like to do is lay things out like I'm folding up a book. That way the toe kicks are here and here. Last chance of me getting something reversed. So first thing, the little cleats for holding up the shelf. Somebody asked me about uh, if I could have just screwed things and not glued them. And the screws are really there to hold it in place while the glue dries. So my mantra is glue it and screw it. I use the nailer for places I don't want the screws showing. Same idea. The glue is actually stronger than the wood around it or the screws. Okay, now 
we got that. We'll get the, the frame on here. You may wonder why there's a gap here. Remember, my countertop only is going to go back to this far. So uh, I'm going to build up something else there. So, all right. Now we'll get the other piece up here. So this is where these little blocks come in. So we'll glue and screw these in. That'll help straighten this out. Because right now it's not really square at all. I'm using these same screws. They're a little expensive, but because of the wide flat head, there's less chance of it splitting this because I'm going into the end grain. In this case, I'm not gluing it because I want it to. Uh, I want to be able to take this out if I need to. I'm going to add those little corner blocks on the back, but I'm only going to glue them to the side. I'm not going to glue them to this because I'll have trouble to uh, take them off.
Okay. So now we got that together. Um, this is the back is nice and square. The front is just a little out of square, but um, the face plate that I made is nice and square. So what I'm going to do is get this attached to one side, make sure everything's square, and then attach it and nail it on the other side, nail it all the way around. So we glue that up, and we'll get this get this on. Okay, Get the square in here. Actually, that's pretty good. There you go. It's basically a cabinet. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, I may have mentioned before you can't have enough clamps. I got these nice big ones. I did this just to hold this in place a little bit better while I was racking things around. So let's take it inside. We'll set the countertop on it just to get an idea what it's what the uh, kitchen is going to look like. All right. See you inside. That's how it's going to look. Obviously, I got to build a door and it's going to be a little farther off from the wall. But so, this is that countertop I cut the other day? I'm going to I'll use some uh, silicone adhesive down to hold that in place and uh, stove, a couple more cabinets. So, and there's going to be a, a uh, pantry over here so this is actually going to be over a little bit the stove's going to go right about here so that's it that's basically how to build a cabinet um i know some of you are asking or thinking why don't you just go to the store and buy them they're not that expensive uh you can go to some places that are uh seconds get or uh refurb places and get a uh get them for a lot less trouble is most of the cabinets built now are built with um uh oriented strand board with a little bit of a um veneer on it sometimes it's a plastic veneer uh this way i'm using a good quality plywood it's a little heavier it's a little stronger a little sturdier and in the long run uh i bought one sheet of plywood gave me five pieces which is uh most of what i needed all for about forty dollars and uh with a couple other pieces kicking around that's doing all of my kitchen cabinets um so for less let's say with the scrap pieces it's going to add up all the cabinetry is going to add up to probably about seventy dollars um so why not build them? Doesn't take much. And, uh, you know, I have the tools. So, all right. I'll see you in a couple days, YouTube. Good night. Or goodbye. Whatever. Don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, want to help me out a little bit, or you just want one of these really cool stickers, you can click on the donate button on the main page and 
For every $5 donation, I'll send you two of these little beauties. Make great rust bandages, uh, suitable for small buses or big buses.